Well, I'm Blepo. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Dr. Stephen Furlich. Dr. Stephen, are you ready to do this? Yes. Thanks for having me, George. I'm excited to have you on. Dr. Stephen is the author of the breakthrough book, Sex Talk, How Biological Sex Influences Gender Communications Differently or Differences Throughout Life's Stages. Dr. Stephen, tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and what motivated you to write the book. Okay, thanks. So from an early age, I've always been interested with uh, human social behaviors, and in particular, beyond what people commonly know or um, commonly um, are aware of. So I used to read books uh, growing up as a teenager about nonverbal communication, gender communication. And then when I went to uh, college at the university, um, I majored in psychology. And I found some of that interesting, but a lot of it was uh, diagnosing major disorders. And then I started to look for a minor because I needed one. And I flipped through the catalog and came across communication studies. And then those courses caught my eye, such as nonverbal communication, gender communication, persuasion, public speaking, um, interpersonal communication. So then I made that my minor. And then uh, I went to graduate school and did my uh, graduate studies in communication studies. And I taught some of those courses. Then as a faculty member, after uh, I received my PhD, I've taught for the last several years, um, five or six years, a gender communication course. And in the communication research, it's acknowledged that there are gender communication differences between males and females, but it's pretty much in the social sciences, communication studies, uh, English, and other areas, almost entirely 100% attributed to social factors, social learning, the family, society, all those types of things. But I kept seeing the same types of uh, gender communication differences over and over, regardless of different types of cultures, different time periods, uh, years, decades, and there's consistency. So then I started to look into other research for better explanations for this consistency where all these other social factors change. So I started looking at neuroscience, biology, psychiatry, and found some biological explanations for gender communication differences between males and females, such as uh, brain structural differences, and then also sex hormone differences as well. Fascinating. And if you don't mind me asking, how 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 long ago did uh, you go down this path? When 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 were you in undergraduate? Oh, uh, undergraduates. Um, I finished that in '98, and then I did graduate and uh, finished my PhD around 2006, and then been teaching at uh, the university level ever since, and right. doing research. And one of the things that's like I uh, uh, alluded to was that I've taught a gender communication course and I started to incorporate these other areas of biology into it, but I couldn't find a book for it. So um, just out of uh, mother of inventions is necessity. So then I thought, well, I might as well write my own book because I just kept putting all this work into incorporating into my lectures, all this other research. So it'd be easier just to have it all in one place. And that's what I did. And then I tried to make it, uh, for both, for the classroom and then as easy as possible for other people outside of academia, here's the technicality behind it, but here's the explanation of how you could use it and the reasons why. How is that? Trying to uh, so, trying to do both things. Uh, it was uh, it was exhausting to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, and this is my uh, personal opinion is, I think that's one of the things that academia and particularly in the social sciences really need to improve upon is, this is great to fun facts, it's interesting, this and the other, but taking that next step, how can people actually use it in their personal lives and professional lives um, beyond just memorizing definitions? So right. it took me about a year and a half uh, two hours, at least two hours every day, just to write the rough draft. It has 700 different uh, articles cited. So um, people could get as much information as they want and look up individual, you know, articles if they had more interest in it. Yeah. One of my favorite sayings is I'd rather be useful than brilliant. So yes, yes. 
I think for me, it's just because I'm I'm not necessarily brilliant. So I like to say that oh. that's neither here nor there, Stephen. All right. So you mentioned that there's differences in, in brain structure. And I think yes. you said something else as well. Uh, sex hormones. Sex and the and hormones. And that influences behaviors as well. So at conception, pretty much everyone starts off on the same track. Uh, what we typically think of as female. And then after about four months after conception, that's when the sex hormones uh, start to differentiate those with the XX chromosome from the XY chromosome. And it's those sex hormone differences that are starting to be produced uh, between the two different uh, chromosome types uh, that create these differences. And a lot of it's, uh, well, this is sort of um, the way you could think of it, sort of an opinion that you could kind of blame a lot of it on that Y chromosome and producing those androgens, testosterone, those male sex hormones that really bring this distinction in the play. So um, the sex hormones themselves, such as producing uh, more of the um, estrogen or with the XX chromosome or more of the uh, testosterone with the XY chromosome, they actually create um, brain structural differences between males and females. Whereas science has advanced far enough now, you can analyze a human brain and with over 90% accuracy predict if it's male or female. And some of these differences that um, are, are observed through science based upon the structural differences, and again, this starts out usually about four months after conception, um, are in the areas of communication, emotion, perception, um, and all these areas that influence our social behaviors. So after people are done, uh, after they read my book, they should be able to identify at least five different areas in the human brain and explain how that leads to communication differences. Fascinating. And so men are from Mars, women are from Venus. They're not necessarily off track with that thinking. Uh I have um, <laughs> conflicting thoughts on that book. Um, I've been, I and I've, I've never read the book. It's just, just okay. kind of the idea. Uh huh. And that oh, that uh, that's a popular book. It sold you know millions and millions of copies. And I think it kind of got uh, on the right track in terms of thinking that there are gender communication differences. But one, I think it kind of uh, overplayed it with hyperbole. Um, and it wasn't research based from my understanding that I didn't say anything that was cited that was research based. Uh, a lot of it was maybe more observations. Um, whereas with my book, I tried to have everything backed up by science, by research, and I tried to have much more precision in it. So with that book, Mars and Venus, it kind of looks at people, um, males and females from two uh, totally different uh, worlds. Whereas I think when you think of it as um, within maybe the same uh, type of uh, species for sure, and maybe even the same types of culture and everything's on continuum. So it's not that a male communicates one way and a female uh, a different way entirely, but a little bit better in some areas and uh, the other a little bit better in other areas as well. And maybe some limitations in some areas and some limitations in other areas. Um, so, for example, um, it's been found for years and even decades that females are much superior when it comes to nonverbal communication, both sending and understanding nonverbal communication of other people. And again, previously in the social research, it's always been attributed to social factors uh, growing up differently, this or another, but there are biological explanations for it. And one of the things that uh, people aren't nearly as aware of as what they should have that my book brings out is that women have a much more integrated brain. They have much more connections across both hemispheres. Whereas with males, they have more connections within each hemispheres. And what that allows her to do is to access more different areas of her brain at the same time. And science has even found more of her overall brain is activated during conversations so it allows her to engage in the conversation while at the same time analyze other people's nonverbal behaviors. Whereas with males, we're much more compartmentalized and we access and it actually shows uh, on fMRI scans that males, when they engage in conversations, the left side is activated for language 
in uh, emotion is activating on the right side. So we could do one or the other, but not as well, both at the same time. So she is going to be able to pick up more on the subtleties and more of the details of other people's behaviors during the conversation and uh, read into it at a much deeper level. And males are going to have a much more uh, literal understanding. But some other explanations as well is um, she has more mirror neurons that are activated during uh, conversations. And what the mirror neurons do is it prepares your body to display the same nonverbal behaviors that you see someone else do. So if your body's preparing to display those same nonverbal behaviors that you see someone else do, it activates similar areas of the brain. It helps you empathize better with them as well. Um, she also has much higher levels of oxytocin which is that bonding chemical that a lot of uh, times people hear about in popular culture or whatever thrown around as that love hormone. So she connects better with other people, understands their emotional state much better from having the higher levels of oxytocin. Because what that does is it not only it makes you, uh, helps you feel a bonding with the other person, a connection, but it takes in more sensory information for you to process. So she, with all those things together, just has more information to go off of during social interactions and sort of my opinion that maybe sometimes there's a misunderstanding uh, non-verbally between males and females because uh, maybe females sometimes overcomplicate things by reading into it too deeply. And maybe sometimes males uh, misunderstand it because we oversimplify it and have a more literal understanding. I don't know if uh, Fascinating. you have any input on that or observe that at all. Or I, I, I wrote down as you were talking, uh, EQ. It's that, that okay. emotional uh, intelligence. Right, 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 and, right. And, and you essentially went on uh -huh. to say that just the way our brains work, women are skew more towards having a higher level of EQ, which I think is, which doesn't surprise me at all. My, my, my anecdotal, just the experience doing the podcast for as many as I have, um, I find that, that many of my guests who are female have a higher level and they're, they're 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 easier to talk to oftentimes than 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 our men. I would say that that's probably on average true. I have, and this is my favorite chapter, chapter twelve. It's called Women's Sixth Sense, and I go through all the five senses. And research has shown how females are superior on all, all five senses. Um, they could distinguish between more different types of smells, more different types of taste. Uh, her, her taste preferences tend to fluctuate based upon her, her uh, cycle, the menstrual cycle that goes on. Um, she's much more sensitive to uh, touch. Um, here, she can hear a larger range of sounds and that's related to estrogen. So as her estrogen uh, levels are higher, more in her um, reproductive uh, age, um, she's able to hear much better due to higher levels of estrogen. And then when she enters menopause, estrogen uh, drops and so is her hearing ability. And then sight. Sight is on the X chromosome. And um, with having two X chromosomes, females are much superior with being able to see uh, many more different shades of uh, hues of colors than what males are. And uh, only males are um, colorblind, which is about 10%. And there's even uh, a few females, a smaller percentage, that uh, have an extra uh, cone that's on the retina that allows them to see color even better. Um, so they can see color better. And uh, one of the things that uh, also is throughout that chapter is that their insula, their insula is larger and more active. And what that does is it helps to process sensory information. So not only is her uh, sense, her, all of her senses are superior to what males are, but she could process that information much better through the insula being. So she has much more information to go in, uh, off of and to align is there is some truth to it, I think, of women's intuition, uh, having a better sense of uh, what's going on socially, and having more cues to go off of as well. I think it's fascinating. So I'm, I'm surprised, well, it's probably because you've done, you've done the research, and your book is, is, is now bringing this information forth that, that women have more integrated um, Shoot, what is the term? Uh, it's connections across both hemisphere, hemispheres. Yes. 
And we're much more more, uh, um, that, again, again, helps her to do more things at the same time during conversations socially. So the language and the nonverbals at the same time, whereas us, language is activated on the left side and then uh, emotion on the right side. So expecting us to be able to communicate about our emotions on the same level as what females do, I think it's just unrealistic. We're just not uh, capable of doing that is structurally, but then take this into consideration. So if that's not enough for us of a disadvantage, testosterone actually hinders uh, language abilities, social abilities, um, nonverbal ability. So higher levels of testosterone hinders our ability when it comes to language and social abilities. Whereas in males, adult males tend to have 20 times as much testosterone than what females do. And uh, estrogen actually helps language and social abilities. Um, and females, adult females tend to have about 20 times as much estrogen as what males do. So it's not only structural, but it's the sex hormone differences as well. And what, what it does is those sex hormones so we talked about early on at conception, um, a few months afterwards, how that creates structural differences, but the sex hormones is what makes it function. So it makes functional differences between males and females, uh, socially and behavioral as well. How do those areas function and activate is based upon partially the sex hormones themselves. You can think of it as the oil in the car engine. It helps, the, it helps it run differently based upon what different type of oil that you put in. Fascinating. So armed with this new information, how can I do a better job communicating with, with, with my wife? Okay. So I guess, um, uh, you need to understand that she's going to look into it much more beyond what you say, the words themselves, a much uh, deeper understanding of the subtleties, your nonverbal behaviors. And she needs to understand, um, that, uh, not to expect you to communicate with as much emotion um, as what uh, you do. What's been found is in research is that uh, males tend to use more report talk, more of the, just a topic oriented, and females tend to use more of the rapport talk, more of the uh, relationship and tying in emotion, and there are biological explanations for it. She has a larger, more active hippocampus, which is involved with memory. So I'm not sure if uh, it ever came up in conversation where she brings in stuff from the past and you think about how is this related. It's all tied in together for her, um, uh, the past memories with the current topic and then emotion as well. And the hippocampus helps with that. Also with during social interactions, more of the emotion area of her brain is activated. So it's going to be a much uh, uh, deeper emotional um, experience for her, more intense. One of the chapters that um, I covered that probably you could relate to that everyone else uh, saw play out in their lives um, was what happened with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. And the chapter that uh, I have is she demands and he withdraws. And that is a popular um, relationship dynamic of conflict that's been found for decades. But then again, there are some biological reasons for it that just recently I bring out that um, hasn't really been thought of that much, that it takes much more cognitive effort for males to process relationship types of information. So we're not even aware of that maybe things aren't going as well as what we think. Whereas with females, they're much more attuned to it because it takes less cognitive effort, just like we already talked about. They have more information to go off of and uh, sensory information. They empathize with other people better um, as well. So with that relationship dynamic, it even played out in the courtroom itself that Amber said, every time we have a conflict, Johnny, you just leave. And that's a typical uh, uh, relationship uh, dynamic is the male just leaves and avoids it because it's uh, more difficult to address those types of issues um, language wise. So she's invested much more so emotionally. It's even been found when females look at uh, a subliminal negative face. So a face that they're not even aware of, they have more activation in their brain overall and in the emotional areas as well. So she's much more invested emotionally in the relationship and he feels that he's not being valued by what he does, that um, she feels that he's not uh, invested in it uh, language wise, ex expressing his emotions and she's not appreciating what he actually does. 
So um, she needs to understand that what he does is his investment and he needs to understand that uh, he needs to uh, appreciate more of her emotional investment in it. So what could have been done differently with that is um, uh, they found that prior to a conflict that touch, uh, uh, positive types of touch, such as holding hands or maybe a hug prior to a conflict, that increases the oxytocin levels between both people. So it leads to better empathy. You understand the other people. And then secondly, what's as important as well is that mimic behaviors. Mimic behaviors non-verbally indicate uh, the, uh, how positive a relationship is. So if two people uh, display some similar types of non-verbal behaviors, that not only activates similar areas of, of the brain so that you um, uh, better um, empathize with the other person, you understand them, but also increases the oxytocin levels of both people by having some similar nonverbal behaviors displayed between each other so that you not only uh, understand them better, but it, it's that bonding chemical. So if you observe next time you go to the social interaction, a social party, you observe couples around, if they're not displaying similar types of nonverbal behaviors, maybe things aren't nearly as well as what uh, people think they are. Fascinating. Fascinating stuff, Dr. Stephen. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can, people Thanks, learn more, where can people learn more about you and where can they pick up a copy of Sex Talk, how biological sex influences gender communications differently throughout life stages? So the easiest way is just to search my last name, Furlich, F-U-R-L-I-C-H, on either Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Audible. And um, picking up my book will really help out a lot to explain the reasons why. And one of the biggest things is to not try to understand social interactions from your perspective, but try to understand how other people see it, their perspective. Again, you know, like we talked about, females much more likely subtleties, um, and then males much more literal understanding. And then uh, later on this week, um, I have another book coming out called Nonverbal Epiphany, Steps to Improve Your Nonverbal Communication. And um, it helps people understand those uh, subtle nonverbal behaviors that people aren't aware of. Um, uh, and in particular, you know, how uh, most things uh, we're unaware of as males when it comes to nonverbal communication. And it has activities for people to actually do. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Dr. Steven your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Pick up a copy of Sex Talk wherever you buy your books, uh, and you can simply search by Dr. Steven's last name, which is spelled F-U-R-L-I-C-H, and I'll link that in the notes of the show as well. So you can just click there and find it. Thanks again, Dr. Steven. Okay, thanks, George. I enjoyed it. And until next time, remember... Do your part by doing your best.